Americans. It's about whether or not RTZ is going to get kited around here, though. The Death Prophet. Okay, I like this. The same kind of idea that I talked about, where they just have... I have a lineup here, so we don't have to necessarily worry. We'll talk about it in a second as Insania gets himself away from RTZ. There's going to be a Spirit Siphon as well, going back towards the Sven. Zai doesn't have enough mana to keep going all the way here. Actually, he does. And they keep chasing underneath the tower. Nice block, but it's not going to work out for us. In their lane, right? Like, and that's why I really like this draft coming in from Team Liquid. I think they've got some, some really good... Uh, Really good lanes to be able to play this game out, and once they start getting to that point where oh, they've got, got their level sixes. Oh, okay, oh, so they do take down. On the bright side, down bottom, Nightfall did become too oppressively powerful pre the arrival of the Vanguard. So Matu has been bounced out of the lane in its entirety. Mid lane, though, Abed almost died. The Sonic Wave will push back Mikkei. The charge is incoming. Boxy, can he finish him off? Of course he can. And now they're looking towards Fly as well. The Fire Snap cookie helped out. Crit at the very least get some quick revenge with the bushwhack. But it's a two for one exchange in this mid lane. Liquid coming out on top of it. The difference that this Vanguard can make because as soon as it gets picked up, Matsu much harder to kill. But it's fortunately for him, Crit got sharpshooter. And we saw exactly how much damage was going to emerge from him. Killing spree right now for Nightfall. Three heroes have been brought down. Almost 700 damage dished out by the Hoodwink with one spell. Seems fair and balanced to me. And with them being able to kill Matu yet again. Pack's going to be coming out very, very soon here for Nightfall. That's when he can start to group up with his team. Once he's able to, to get towards these tier 1 towers, it's going to be on Liquid to see if they can get these responses going in because they had a good first 13 minutes, and now it's about their responses to see what uh, they can do against EG. On bottom, we're going to see that EG, what they can do right now is just use Crit and Nightfall as a duo to quickly get a kill onto Boxy. It's one thing when it's a Brood by himself, but Brood, oh, it's a double damage down bottom. Dude, no cap, if this was a DD for the Shadow Fiends, the way they were posturing, I thought they might actually try to force a Roshan. We see a charge going on to ne Nightfall with the Nether Strike oh, as well. He's bad. stunned up by the Fire Snap Cookie. Nightfall is in danger. Drops the Wraith Pack Totem though, mitigating this damage. Arteezy coming in, looking for revenge. He finds the stun onto Insania as his team cleans up Boxy. And with these two kills on the supports, the path to the Tier 1 tower is wide open. And EG will take it. Activate this God Strength, jump on a hero and blow them up in two hits. And indeed, there we go. Woo! That hurts. There used to be an Insania there. He's gone. Buys back immediately, though. He wants to be involved in this fight. But they found the stun onto Mikke. Oh, he absolutely cannot die. Gets off the Requiem, though. The fear is going to be there. Here comes Zai, activating the Ghost. They're going on to Arteezy. Arteezy about to lose his first life. Or his only life, because Arbed is the one that's carrying the Aegis. They managed to bring down the Sven. Sonic Wave did come out from Arbed, but not enough to win the fight. Zai, nice with the Ghost, able to clean up. But unfortunately, the Spirit Siphon, not going to be enough to heal him all the way against Arbed. And the Ghost do not come back in time. So. The, um, things like the Sheba's Guard as well. Radiant so, Liquid, they need to try and fight their way back in towards this game, because they're starting to fall behind a little bit too much. Radiant's 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 Got a BKB just now for Arbe. Not sure if he'll be able to use it in this fight. For now, they're going to focus all their attention towards Boxy. Also ate up most of the Morty's Kisses. On the bright side, they do get to clean up the Tombstone, giving some bonus gold towards Mike. But... Oh, okay. You know more or less where he is. They don't have a direct lead on him. Yeah, they did use it. Don't want to be able to jump him in. I found him out with the, the babies. Time. Finally find him with the babies. But Zai is also here with Ghost on the other side of the fight. Dismember going out onto RTZ. He can't do the damage. Nether Strike as well as there. His BKB is oh being God. wasted. The Requiem blows him up from Mike. Zai does die, but his job is complete. Allowing them to bring down RTZ. And now the chase is on from the rest of Team Liquid. Charge in onto Crit. Bushwhack will prevent it from going all the way through. But Matu, he's now starting to feel himself. Getting deeper into the fight. Oh, They're looking for chat. Fly. They should be able to also kill the Hoodwink at the same time. Double kill for Matumba Man. And Nightfall and Arbel forced to flee away. He's in my team. He's, um, he's target prioritization. But when you catch up Matu literally by himself. Shows how much damage they can do. Now with the Matu buyback. Are they going to get scanned here? EG, they're staying in the pit. Staying in the pit. Morty's kisses were raining in. Arbet and RTZ both pop BKBs to try and ensure that they can escape from this one. But RTZ stopped by Boxy's Nether Strike. He will still be able to blink himself out as they do bring down this Hoodwink on the far edge of the engagement. You will stop. There's no more BKB oh, for the A guard. He is going to be brought down. Matu saying, well, it's nice, right? In the meantime, speaking of Matu, he caught Arbet in the mid lane. We go back to RTZ now as he gets Requiem <laughs> feared into Zai. We'll be there with the bonus damage from the Ghosts. And not only that, Flu... The Liquid, they're in a really, really good spot right now to be able to head EG their first loss of the group stage, especially... Oh, the Hex. 
at a time. The Hex did come out onto Roxy, but they oh, got the, the dismember onto RTZ. Yet again, the Sven being kited to hell and back. Not even no allowed BKB. to go in right clicks. He got one right click off in that fight, but a Requiem destroys him yet again. Mega kill streak for the Shadow Fiend. Duels up onto Fly. They hold him in position. They want the additional kill here, and they are going to get it. Matu is closing in. Matu just wants to unhook. Give me that flesh heap stack. Not going to get it, though. Zai steals the kill away from him, but... The most important thing is that Crit is indeed dead. Might have a buyback forced out of him. Already seen the Glyph Force. They pop the Lincoln Sphere. They're jumping in with RTZ, but we already have the oh, Force the Up. Here's the Blink Dismember. They're going back onto Matumba Man. The Sonic Wave not really going to help out from Abed. But unfortunately, the right click damage not enough just yet. We find a very nice push right coming in onto Insania with a huge hit from the Sharpshooter. Abed is able to get a double kill by bringing down the Pudge. But now it's scary because Zai activates the Ghost with the BKB. He's going in. Charge coming in from Boxy. They find RTZ. It's easy. They want the damage on the Sven and the back lines. Mike is busy cleaning up house all by himself on the SF. And now TZ is finally about to fall. Zai gets a killing spree. I'm gonna get a double off the back of Fly's death as well. And that is Team Liquid. Despite losing the Matumba Man part, still being able to demolish the team fight. Sort of waiting for this exact kind of movement to come in from EG and EG. Realize how dangerous going high ground can be here. And they go high ground, but they get caught in. But here's RTZ. They're looking for Mickey with the Sonic the damage. They can kill the Shadow Fane at long last. On the back end of the fight, though, Matu and Zai clean up both supports. But now they get the Hex back out onto Zai. Zai on the Death Prophet trying to escape the missile of this fight. Matu caught between three heroes, and he's not going to be able to survive. Suddenly, Zai finding himself a little bit too isolated as well. And these heroes have fallen low, but not low enough as Abed. Keeps the chase going on to Boxy as meantime Zai drawing away both Artesia and Nightfall closer to the Roshan pit. He's been used oh up, God. he's been caught out, he has been killed off, and Abed Roche's finishes off Insania. And a GD! That's what's is happening. Zai might be a little bit too far forward here. Does have a blink dagger though. So should be able to get himself out. No, he can't! Abed has the Aghanim shot, so they keep him in position. They can't save him just yet. He's on the low ground now, Matu, thinking about trying to eat somebody, but unfortunately he won't be able to do so until RTZ jumps down to the low ground and Zai has already been brought down. Mike forced to BKB. Abed refreshes for the secondary Sonic Wave onto Matu, and now they've killed the Pudge. Insania jumped forward with the Fire Snap cookie, but that's just gonna lead to his death. Three heroes have fallen, and unfortunately... Like the, uh, like the Shadow Fiend. Uh -oh. I mean, Boxy got hexed. Uh, they do not have access to a Lincoln's or a Lotus or anything on the Spirit Breaker, so he just dies heads up. That's a gem given up as well. And he needs to buy back potentially because I do not think that EG are going to not take this opportunity. They jump onto the high ground looking for Matu. Here comes Artizi. They've broken the Lincoln's onto Mike. Lotus off, back onto RTZ, activates the BKB now, Zai hexed up, he can't get off his spells, but at the same time they finally dismember onto Abed. Now Matu and the crew, they want to bow forward, the BKB from RTZ has expired. Zai with his own BKB, goes deeper in the fight with the Exorcism, goes chasing down Fly. They've gotten that kill, Crit, the lone survivor so far, allowed to TP out on the high ground. I don't think Boxy has the vision here, oh he charges through, realizes uh -huh. where he's at. Boxy, man! What is going on? Matsu gets a triple kill off the box sometimes. And now they yeah. know though. Boxy scouted it out. Look what he's telling yeah. his team. He's like, guys, Arteezy's on the other side of the map. Let's go force a fight. Let's get in. Matu looking for somebody to jump onto with the dismember. He goes onto the high ground. Only comes a crit first. Crit gets stunned by Boxy, who charges through to try and find Fly. Nether Strike will be there as well. As crit gets taken out. 65 seconds in the grave. No buyback. Oh, and also, Nightfall gets caught out. On the high ground through middle, he's dead too. He does have buyback, but now they have these ghosts from Zai flying everywhere. Four versus five, how on earth do they defend this? They cannot play against these megas. But they're Ghost about to strength. have to deal with them regardless. God strength is down, exactly. That's why they went for this move. The one bright spot with already being mega is you don't have to worry about positioning to protect Rax, so you can just sit by the tier 4 towers. But Zai Wait, comes in easy. for the fight. Requiem comes out. They've already caught Crit. Crit is falling very low. Artizi, he's now coming into the fight with the quad strike. He's trying to chop down Matumba Man. He will be able okay. to get the kill onto the Pudge. Chasing onto Zai right now. Artizi, the superhero. Oh, so but the BKB is finished. He's about to get feared. The charge coming in from Boxy as well. Can he run down Zai? Doesn't seem like he'll be able to. But he has demonstrated seconds. the power of this rapier. Well, if Atizi can buy back, this would be huge. But Atizi might have also been scouted. I think they see him. He's been oh. jumped on. Dismember there from Matumba Man. Zai in with the Exorcism Ghost as well. And Artizi can't get off his spells. Abed buys him time though. Gets off the Sonic Wave. But the Requiem oh, from Mickey. 
brings down the Sven. That's Arafia on the deck, picked up by Boxy. Arvid still doing his best to try and fight this. Sonic Wave, though, will be there. Arvid has Arvid able to reclaim the Rapier. He passes it on to Arteezy. Arteezy might want to re-engage onto this fight. Can they get there in time? Blink forward. Won't be able to be there. And uh, who's gonna die next? Nobody, because Team Liquid are on the retreat. RTZ finds the Storm Hammer out onto Matu. He gets the damage out. Matuma Man is gonna end up dead 100 seconds in the grave. And Abed still chasing. Has Ax Mickey waiting for the opportunity to go in with the Arcane Blink Requiem. Does he have a chance yet? RTZ scouted out to the top lane. Is Mickey going in? There's the God Strength. There's gonna be the fear onto Abed, but he does get off the BKB. Charge in onto RTZ. He will be hit by Boxy. Activates BKB. They want to force a BKB out of RTZ, but it's not happening just yet. In the meantime, they'll fly. We'll end up dying to the exorcism. But just the Aegon! RTZ! Right clicking on the edge of the fight. Able oh. to bring down the first life of Matu. Already killed Insania. Mickey though, gets off the fear. RTZ, will he survive this fight? He doesn't have the satanic proc because he's feared and he's killed. Two minutes in the grave, no buyback for the Aegon as crit cannot contend with these exorcism ghosts. He gets charged into by Boxy. He might fall all alone to try and defend this. Crit will buy back. Arbet is just on the high ground. But EG, they see the writing on the wall. They acknowledge the power of Team Liquid and they will suffer their first loss in the group stages as Team Liquid take game number one in this best of two series. What a performance. Lesh, not really gonna run out of mana. In this game, they're not playing into an AA or anything like that, so you'll be able to get your heals off if the blood's successful at But yeah, in game two, they're trying to make it much more so. This Lycan Wolves did get some vision here of Insania, which allows EG to come up the hill, find out this Crystal Maiden, and bring him down quickly. First blood drawn by a crit. So they're like, well, Lesh, you go elsewhere on the map, my friend. You can just farm from the top lane. Bottom though, Boxy's in danger. I have a first blood happening as we see Arteez is beating down onto him. Doesn't have the time work anymore, but doesn't need it as Fly. Able to get a kill on this side of the map. Let's talk about uh, some of these heroes. Where we're going to be expecting pearls to be going. Let's connect onto Lesh. Onto the Lycan rather from the Lesh rack. Do they have the damage to kill Nightfall? They might actually with the Lightning Storm, and indeed they do. Mickey ends up just being able to chomp him down. Alright. Uh, I was literally about to ask how quickly should the Lycan buy BKB? I think they're, on, they're still sticking around for oh, Abed. Boxy comes back in, had the patience to wait for Abed. They will be the a LSA with an arrow that connected onto Matu. Matu dies first. They do eventually get the kill onto Abed, but hashtag worth for the side of EG because they might be able to pick up more off the back of this. Crit will have arrow again in two seconds. Insania, you are dead to rights, my friend. Boxy is doing Boxy's his best to block, time block the angle of the arrow, but not going to be allowed to do so. And now because of this, he might be the one that gets arrowed himself. Crit leaps away. Boxy misses the tree throw. Now he's in danger. Do you have your boxing shoes on? Your dancing shoes on? He had them yesterday. Or earlier on today, rather, in game number one, and yesterday as well, Frank and Druid, as well as this Enigma. Control sides of the map quite quickly. First chrono of the game, though, it's easy. Connecting onto two as Arbet also showing up for this one. The Laguna Blade will kill off the Enigma, oh, but the Avalanche from blade. Boxy onto three sets up for the kills onto Arbet and Fly. The lone survivor being Arteezy. But a great rotation. Gets himself in the trees. Midnight Pass will break the trees. They know where he's at. They found him. Black Hole gets committed. Zai still has Malefist done. Will he need it? He absolutely will. And the roots will come out from Matu, preventing him from being able to jump away with the Q. That's the first big kill onto RTZ. Top lane as well. Mickey in danger here. He's being surrounded by these EG heroes. Druid, you want to start using that BKB timing. And even this uh, Blink Bloodstone timing for, uh, for Leshrac as well. Oh, RTZ. RTZ. Got frostbitten down bottom. This is tragic. They did this. He was actually trying to escape because they had Moonlight Shadow triggered, sensing that a gank was coming his way, and they just quickly get the kill act of map control. Makes it much more difficult to make these jumps. And mid lane, oh, Boxy jumps onto RTZ. He gets feared. He gets right click down. And the faceless void is gone. Freezing field coming in from Insania. Abed though goes BKB with the LSA to cancel it. But here comes Mickey. Bloodstone is a going. The damage is a coming. And they're going to lose two because of it. A double kill for this Lesh Rack. And they might not be done just yet. Boxy does come across Nightfall, but not able to get a correct lead. At least two of the core heroes down bottom. Mickey realizes this as well and blinks to safety underneath the tier 2 tower. But where's the catch going to happen? Oh no! Mid lane crit. Walked underneath the sentry ward. The Moonlight Shadow does not provide him with protection as Zai ends his life. So EG down bottom, they still want to try and force a fight somewhere. They're going onto Arteezy! Arteezy! He was baiting so they could turn with the Chrono, but he gets blown up. He's not survivable enough. 
to survive the burst coming in from Boxy in the Lash Rack. They want to try and break this up. They smoked up all the way behind. They really want to find the Enigma or any other bigger target first. Oh, he still has access to the bubble. Who's he going to commit it on? He hasn't used it just yet. They've already blown up the Enchantress. And now oh, no. the Kona comes out. No but damage. there's a freezing field. Oh, it's easy. Can't put in the damage. They eventually do end up creating Crystal Maiden. Now Matu trying to get himself out of dodge here. He's in danger. Losing his life slowly but surely. Does still have an Aegis though. The fear preventing Arteezy from getting the final kill. As Boxy somehow still alive will eventually end up going down. But Arteezy getting oh, turned no, around upon really. by Mickey and Matu. And they're able to get the kill. They don't even burn the first life of the lone druid. Arbet ended up dying as well. Fear throws back flies where he cannot escape either. As the only person able to run deep away is going to be Nightfall. Crit is forced to hide inside the trees. And EG has seen enough. They do not feel they have what it takes to keep this game going. So they throw in the towel. They call GG. They ensure that Team Liquid are not just on one. Right.